everybody and welcome back. My name is Sue and I'm from OML Embroidery and today we're going to do something really cool. Something completely outside the box and having to do with my luminaire. Uh, but even if you don't have one of these fancy dance schmancy machines, you'll be amazed at what they can do. So we're not going to be stitching the potato bag. Um, I can, if you guys want, um, and do it on the sewing verse. And um, you guys can let me know in the comments after the video if that's what you want. So let's start off with... I had to give Dawn my gingers. So I found these. Now these are Tula Pink. The packaging is delightful. Tula Pink limited edition scissors. And they have Tula Pink all over them. And the big ones say fabric only, which I appreciate. I think it, these are like heavy and sharp. So, so I'm looking forward to that. And a cool tin as well. So I like it. I can't wait to try the pointy ones. I think they're going to be a whole lot of fun. So the thread we're using today is the Color Play, the green ones, which is one of my favorite ones. So it is the Seattle collection. So we're going to use this. Isn't that cool? I love this and it, neon green, which we've seen before, right, Don? Neon yeah. green. You can tell this one has the neon green in it though. And this one is Christmas green, uh, which is a perfect green for Christmas. I love it. And this one is silver green. So I actually really like that color. It's kind of like light and it is silvery. And Hedge, which is a really, really dark green, which is on my machine, so so you guys can see it. So that's the collection we're using today. Now the design is free from dime, so you can go over to their website and, um, oh, I forgot to introduce Don. Over there at the computer, behind the curtain is Don. Really? <laughs> Hello. <laughs> he thinks he's clever over there. Just wait. I'm going to throw something at you, Don. No, I'll see you have scissors. No. <laughs> They're tulip pink. I wouldn't waste them on you. Hey. <laughs> All right. Enough of that. All right. Okay. Sorry about that, Karina. Thanks for the reminder to introduce Don. So so what are we doing with the design? We're going to do something that's really cool. Now, if you have uh, Brother Luminaire, any of them, the the Soler, no, the Solaris is the Baby Lock Luminaire. Stellaire. Stellaire and a whole bunch. If you have the Design Center, uh, then you can do this. And I think you guys uh, will enjoy this i think it's really cool um carolyn says i would like to see you sew out the sew potato bag on the sewing verse yep i will if there's enough people who want it the instructions are fantastic from dime if you're looking for a link for this design it is one of the first things in the description of the video i always put them there so we are going to take the hot potato design and we're going to make it into something else just using the luminaire. So I think you guys will really like this. It is like uh, pretty cool what I can do. So without much further ado, let's go to the luminaire, please, Don. And I'm going to show you guys what I'm going to do. Uh, I guess we can't just do the luminaire, right? No. All right. So we're going to go to down at the bottom. You can't quite see, but it's right, right, right there. Uh, can you move that up a bit or is it the camera? Mm. Camera, come on. 
now okay so my design center and this looks kind of scary but it isn't it's really cool so we're going to go right here to shapes and you will find a ton of shapes now there's more if you click up here you get to see all different ones swirly ones so if you wanted to add some detail to it uh saved outlines i don't have any saved and then there's your connection to the cutter so that kind of makes it really cool so i want to make a trivet so i'm gonna go okay and i thought this was really cool like a warning 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 nice shape um you can make it whatever size you want and i want it to be a running stitch so i'm gonna go here and i'm gonna pick running stitch you'll be surprised at how easy this is and i'm gonna pick a color that we can see hopefully purple and then you go to this line fill that's what it is so it kind of makes sense and it turns purple and it is a running stitch so that's our first step so then we go to next and we can change some of the details on it then we go to set and it's gonna convert into the embroidery design and if you wanted to just stitch this out you could you could but I'm gonna click on add here in the bottom and uh, we're gonna do it again now we could copy and paste these that's fine um, I'm not going to do all that for this one. You could create it again and bring it in, bring it in. Um, but I'm going to go to my designs and just the hot potato design is what we're after. And it fits right in there. So we're going to set that. And uh, but wait, we can do some more. We can do a lot more because that doesn't really make anything here. I can zoom in for you guys so you can see it better uh don't mind the hoop behind i just didn't bother to chain it change it so this is our hot potato design inside the applique or like trivet whatever you want to call it any shape will do you can make these ones bigger and smaller the ones that you do in the design center but try to leave this one um the hot potato you could do it a little bit but i wouldn't make it too much bigger or smaller so let's go to add and we're going to go to my design center and you can also save it at any point too by the way and it's going to come this is going to come in at the same size that i had it now don't worry our hot potato design is still there we're just not uh, using it right now it's still there though uh, okay so now we want to do satin stitch look at all your choices triple stitch and these are all like motifs and it's pretty cool or if you just want the line uh, to trace on or whatever you can use that one so let's pick another color that we can see maybe a blue and then we're going to go to this you see it's a a paint can with a line and this is a paint can with like a filled in drip so that's when you're filling in um the background or satin or tatami stitches but this one we want to do it as a line so we're going to click on it and i think i did it it's not as accurate as I would like, but I'm also not using the stylus for it. So it did it. I just didn't see it. Now I want to make this is the width. Now I want to make that, you know, about two because we like our satin stitches to be nice and thick. Point 0.2. Yeah, sorry, point 0.2. Uh, isn't that cool? I, like I, I think that's really cool then all you have to do is go set right there just like that there but we could do more so let's go add and we're going to go back to my design center what are you laughing at not a brat says is sue making a trivet yes 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 i am 
all on the embroidery machine. So I'm excited about it. So then I'm going to go to change the line and look at all these that you can get. So these are designs, um, motif stitches, basically, that can go around the outside. Uh, these ones, I guess it's just the, oh, it's candle wicking, sorry. So go to select, and I really like that one. So let's select that, and we're gonna put a color on it that we can see, and there we go. Do that line again and it changes color it's hard to see i could zoom in again just to make sure that's what i was doing when i was setting it up before and we're going to go to next and there's all the things you can change look at that look at how beautiful that is did you know this machine could do all this don i did not <laughs> um now, I know the size needs to be a bit smaller. I'm okay with all the settings, um, but let's go to set and it's gonna bring it in. Now that's over top, so, you know, not cool. So I'm just gonna select that one and I'm gonna go to edit and we wanna go to size and then we can make it smaller. Look how pretty that is. What do you think? Just like that. Fancy stitches around the whole bit. So I'm liking that. Now another thing you can do on it is this button right here, which is the order. So you can move this back. This is the one we just did. Or forward or bring it to the beginning or right to the end so you can set the order for it now you can also set it into uh applique but i i just kind of wanted to do it manually now one more thing that you can do that's really cool so we're going to go to add and we're going to go to uh my design center and we're going to do the shape thing again pick the same one it comes in at the same size, so it's okay. I kind of like it. And uh, what we want to do is fill it with, with what? With quilting stitches. Look, right there. Look at the selection we have. Some of these are really amazing. I like this one, the fish. Look at all the choices we have. A lot of nice ones in there. That's a lot of nice ones. Uh, it's still going. I really like that one. There's so many things on these machines. You have to experiment a little bit. And I think this is really cool. I sat here and played around with it yesterday and I thought it's kind of nice not to be at the computer all the time. Let my machine do the work. So we'll pick maybe a black just so we can see it. And there's different kinds. There's the stippling. And you can change so many things on it. So now you can see this changed right here. And I've got to go to this fill and touch it and look. Just like that. Boom. So we're going to go to next. And... These are all the settings, which I think is incredible that you can change how it looks. You can warp it. You can move stuff around. You can change the thickness. I think it's really cool. Some people are saying that their machine doesn't do that, but I guess the point is explore your machine to see what it does do. Yeah, for sure. And if it doesn't do it, you can use software, but... It, even if your machine doesn't do it, I thought it would be really cool for everyone to see mm -hmm. what it can do. Because uh, I don't know about you guys, but I really, really haven't done enough of this playing Explore. around with no, it. It's something you should do. You should really explore your machine. Yeah, see and what, I'd like to do, do a little bit of stuff all the time. So, okay, right now... After our satin stitches, we have these stitches, and that's not going to work. So we need to move this up. So move it back, move it back. That's probably good right there. 
So there's our design. What do you guys think? Cool? I think it's cool. It's cool. Hopefully I didn't go too quickly for you guys. Um, let's go to the one that I worked on yesterday. And hopefully I did everything right. But look how I have it laid out exactly what I would do on the computer. So placement stitch down of the batting the thermal batting if you want and then stitch down the fabric and then we're going to do the quilting stitches and then that actual design which i haven't modified at all and this is for the back fabric satin stitches and design stitches nice yeah isn't that cool and getting the different layers and levels for it, it's just a copy and paste and put it in the right spot. So are there any questions before we start stitching out this beauté? I, I wasn't looking at it. So um, isn't that cool? That's I'm sure Lynn is sitting there going, wow. <laughs> yeah, you don't you don't need embroidery software if you have this. Now this is just a design. Now Eileen Roche had a beautiful uh, project for it, but I thought let's think outside of the box. Let's just literally think outside the box and do something completely different. So I did. So we good? Okay. We're good. Yeah, I don't see any other questions. Good so far. And I know not everybody has a Luminaire or a Stellaire or, you know, not everybody does. But if I didn't, when I had McDreamy, I enjoyed seeing what the Luminaires could do. So, yeah. What machine are you using? It has a Luminaire 2 and his name is Captain Jack. Oh, stitching it twice. Ha! Huh. Oh, I didn't change. They're all going to stitch out twice. I didn't change that. It had a double line and then a single line. Oh, you didn't change it. I didn't change it. Hey, okay, well, live and learn, right? Bjorn's right here saying hi. Hello, Bjorn. Okay, so all my lines are going to stitch out twice. However... That's pretty handy. I'm I'm like seriously okay with that. Because that's what I wanted to do for this and I just it was late. <laughs> I didn't bother. So, there we go. And we can always stop it and move to the next one if we don't want it to stitch twice. But I love the shape of it. I love the shape of it. You can also, there's so many designs like frames and different things like that. So hopefully you guys uh, think it's kind of cool. I just thought it'd be fun. I live outside the embroidery box, so you know I had to do something different. That's good to know about doing it twice. I, um, I didn't know. All right, so our batting is down. Now we are going to do our fabric. So I just picked something. It's a little bit busy, maybe, but it should be nice. So we're going to stitch that down. I know it's going to go twice, and that's okay. That was my mistake. So did you know the Luminaire and the... the um, Dream Machine and Still Air could do all this. Because I didn't I do this. No, you have ten needles. I traded ten needles for the ability to. Oh, that would be hilarious. You have to hand in your Wilcom software too, Bob. Nope. Yeah. Not a trade machine. No. I was impressed though because I didn't do a whole lot of you know, the programming and design center on the dream machine. And I really wanted to dig into it with uh, the Luminaire. And I'm really glad I did. 
Well, the machines have a lot of built-in features. I mean, almost all of them have lettering and stuff like that, but there's so much more. You just have to look and see what it can do. Not yeah. Not all can do this, but they can do quite a few things. All right, let's go back to the desk. desk is up. The other thing, good thing to check out on your machine is your built-in designs. I, yeah. I think it's cool. You'd be surprised. You can merge two designs together and, you know, make something completely different. But this is what it's all about. I think it's really cool. I could have, of course, easily done this on my software, especially since I have PEP software and Eileen Roche gives you the native files so you can pretty much do anything you want with it this is nice and easy to cut out too by the way because mm -hmm. it's just a couple of snips i know i'm going backwards but apparently that's what i'm gonna do i don't know why i start cutting to the left instead of the right but uh, are, you, are you backwards too i kind of am sometimes that's okay um, yeah, really, you should be putting this part. It's meant to glide along so you don't catch your water-soluble stabilizer. I tend to go back and forth when I'm doing applique. Uh, for some reason, I just, I just hear Tula Pink's words, and she says, it's not rocket science. If you're doing it backwards, if that's how your brain works. So I've given up fighting it. I just do it automatically this way. So, it's a good trimming day today. Yay! That was actually quite easy to do. Now, background quilting. I think I'm going to use, like, this kind of color. Um, I have a dream machine, and it has IQ Designer. I need to practice making design projects. Have been afraid using it, but now I feel you can jump into it. Yeah, Carolyn, it's a lot easier than I thought, for sure. Our camera's frozen? Eh. No? Okay. All right, uh, let's go back to the machine. Yeah, dig in, guys. Dig in. I'm going to do more videos like this. What? And somebody just jumped in, so they're asking what it is you're doing. Well, I'm a taking a design by uh, Eileen Roche of Designs and Machine Embroidery, and I'm making, I didn't touch her design at all because I just always leave the designer's work as is, and I'm making um, a trivet with the design, uh, completely constructed on my luminaire. No software, no nothing. And it's pretty cool. And I showed everyone how to do it at the beginning of the video, so I'm going to encourage everyone to check out their machines. If you don't have all the fancy stuff, um, then check out your built-in designs. They all have it. So now we're doing the quilting design and I did pick a different one because I was taking my time. Really? We're going to put a trim in there? Huh. That's interesting. I hope it doesn't trim everything. This is my first time doing this too. Oh, that color is really nice. Okay, that's really cool. So what have I learned today? I have learned that uh, you can pick a single pass or a double pass and that the built-in quilting designs are awesome, awesome. So there's lots you can do definitely lots you can do so we'll keep working on this this is one of my plans with getting the luminaire in the first place is that i can play with all the bells and whistles and show you guys how to do it now this was really simple wasn't it just add uh some people when you make a new part of the design they save it into memory in case something goes wrong you can just bring it in together like for example to do the first three 
which are exactly the same. If you save it once, you can just bring it in and change the color three times. That's all you have to do. What? Surely it's saying that when you make shapes and designs and are choosing the line, it is actually a double line. Oh, is it? And when you choose double line, it's actually a triple I don't know why I use the design center a lot. It doesn't have to be a change. Well, mine wasn't triple. It, it only stitched it twice. I don't know what I selected. Oh. I didn't touch it. It was just there, so. That's her observation. But that's okay. You can work with it. I mean, stitching it down twice, that's perfectly fine. Makes everything secure. Seriously enjoying the quilting stitches. Isn't that nice? It's pretty cool that you just made a true bit on your machine. Isn't that neat? I, I just never kind of like bothered before because I thought, eh, what can you really do? It's not going to be that much. And I found it awkward. But once I got the rhythm of doing the ad and adding more things, it's a relatively smart program. And I thought it was really cool. Plus, I love this hot potato design. So for those of you just joining or missed any of the conversation, I will be doing the potato bag if people want just because there's a fair amount of sewing in it uh, i won't be doing like the actual stitching out of the design because we're doing that today but the rest of it i'll do a sewing verse video on it i just thought i felt like something different yeah I'm, I'm really surprised that it has so much. Basically, you can do... I never imagined, okay, that I could create something like this on my machine. So including the quilting, including the detail work, and the satin stitch sizes to what I wanted them to be. Um, and it was easy. Just keep adding your layers in, or like I said, save them whatever you feel like doing. Now the first stitch here that it trimmed was a little bit wonky, but it's only one, so I don't really care. It's fine. And it's gonna connect to it. That is gorgeous. I don't know how well you guys can see how puffy it is. It's wonderful. Oh, it's gonna nice. do it there too. People are saying they'd like to see the bag. Yeah. Well, I hope no one's disappointed that I'm not sewing it today, but I will. I'm excited that you did it all on your machine. And I know. I know. That's the thing. Okay, I think this is probably a mistake. So I, all you have to do, if you're running into it, it's just the outline. I'm just going to skip it. And now we're going to get into the lettering. So now is when we can start using our medley so i just inadvertently i think because it's yellow i can't see the yellow at all <laughs> on it um i'm gonna try to use the variegated thread as much as i can because it's awesome and that's what i am putting on right now awesome this this is the first time i've used this thread set but it's one of the ones that caught my attention right away uh, I just think these are fantastic so this is for one clover and the lettering which is cool um, I don't know if you watched yesterday Dawn but part of the new word art and stitches she added a whole bunch of fonts and she added fonts that are specifically digitized for the medley thread or the variegated thread oh with like they're just running stitch lines yeah. through it and it looks gorgeous that's awesome well no, i wasn't able to get you that guy turned out well it's kind of cute because 
that worked out really well actually because each leaf is a different color <laughs> that's neat oh yeah the look at the look that has awesome it looks like it's shadowed can you see it well enough the dime color play thread is on sale now I know I did not need it, but I bought them all. All right, so did I. And I said the exact same thing. I, I don't really need it, but I bought them all. Uh, they were on sale, same price, and I thought it was fantastic. This is just after um, Don and I struggled very hard to figure out the my favorite one, the bright one. That's awesome. Okay, so these are probably the ones that are digitized for variegated thread, which I always had this rule for lettering. I never used variegated thread because it just turns out striped, and I don't really like that. I mean, Christmas or birthday colors or something, but this is a whole different story, man. Yeah, satin stitch should just be striped. But yeah, awesome. yeah, it looks better. I'll, you guys will be able to see it better i'm like what's wrong with that t but it'll balance out it's not quite as uh showing up as well on here but maybe when it's done it will i thought it would show up a little bit better on the brown however you can see don's looking from the the back here uh look at that quilting stitches yeah they also have endless quilting stitches. There's three patterns, and I saw there's a way to make your own quilting stitches on the machine, if you can imagine that. Hmm. So it has to do with scanning, so you can scan in your design and yeah. then set it up for quilting. That's awesome. Yeah, it doesn't get much better than that. So yeah, hot potato, I love it. I love it. I think this is working out yeah. really well. It'll show better when we do that shot. I think so. It's just how I'm looking it at it. Good. That neon sure shows up. That's for sure. I like that. Does it still work turning off sensor? That's what I like about group chat. You can learn new things. Uh, I may have missed some of the conversation. Yeah, Turning off what sensors? I leave all my sensors on. Bobbin detection. If you're having trouble with your machine that um, it keeps stitching when there's no bobbin, it's happened a couple times with this machine. I was like, what the heck? I was kind of mad because it just kept stitching away. Just, you know, half an hour. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, you just have to clean your bobbin area. It just gets fluffies around it and it doesn't read it properly. So ask me how I know. I've done it twice and now I clean it out a little more regularly. Um, it's easy to do. I guess we could do some quick maintenance videos on it, changing the needle and cleaning out the bobbin area. My only problem with the bobbin is I can never put the black piece in properly. Um, again, how my brain works, I don't know. I don't know. All right, so now we are gonna do the shapes around. And I'm going to leave the variegated in for that. She is suggesting that maybe you demonstrate sometime bringing in your own design and make it cool. Yeah, what I just said, yeah. I will play with that, but I'm going to try to do more with the machine. I'm going to try to do a little bit more There's of these kind of things. What's that? There's a lot that it does. Oh, it does so much more. I've only scratched the surface. What I do like about this, though, is that it was easier than I thought it would be. Um, I played around a tiny bit on the Dream Machine, but I was like, but it's faster and easier to do it, you know, on the in the software that I know better. 
but I was surprised at how easy it was to do and it wasn't like it didn't feel awkward I don't know what the right word is there but it didn't feel like I was struggling I so this would make a very cool beanbag for playing on potato well <laughs> yes that's clever isn't it so, my medley colors are telling me to change, and we're going to go to my favorite, everyone's favorite, neon green. It's so green that it messes up the color on our cameras, <laughs> right? It's so neon when I hold the, the thread, the actual thread up. Pretty luminescent. So now we're just going to be stitching out the clovers. So we've got a couple of those to do. So I will uh, be doing more and coming up with little projects using, you know, designs that we have. Just think outside the box. That's, you know, the goal of it all. Think outside the box. That green is spectacular. It's pretty hard to see the stitches even on the close-up, huh? Yeah. It's okay. It does actually look better. But I'm thinking maybe when all is said and done that I needed a solid fabric. Black. I thought of it, really but then I... I thought maybe I was being boring <laughs> if I picked black. I tried to do better. It didn't quite work. We'll still be able to see it, but what do, what it does when you turn off the sensors, it will not tell you when you're out of thread. Um, yeah, I leave that on because I need notice of it because I don't pay any attention to bobbins. And I'm often living on the bobbin edge. So I don't turn off any of my sensors. I don't change the speed. I don't change the tension. I don't change anything to do with the bobbin. I just figure, you know, the machine is uh, smart enough. It, it, it can do all that stuff. Janet Nelson, welcome. I lost my glasses. Oh, that sucks. All right. We are creating using Eileen Roche's design, which I did not modify in any way. Instead of doing the hot potato bag, I created all of these designs other than her design right on the embroidery machine. So, um... It's pretty cool, actually, and I'm pretty happy with it, how it's turned out so far, except for my background fabric. I needed, I needed it to pop, and it doesn't with the brown. I thought the brown was actually light enough, but it isn't. Okay, so now we're using this silver green and it's a beautiful color and it's part of the medley and i like it now this probably won't show up very well so Thank look you, looking back a nice solid color would be amazing Thank you, Jill. Glad you're holding on. She's not feeling well today. She's not sure if she can uh, make the whole thing. So, all right. All right. So far. I hope you guys are enjoying this um, kind of outside the box episode. Um, and for people just joining, I will be doing the sewing of the potato bag in a uh, sewing verse video but I just thought this would be really fun so if you have one of these fancy schmancy machines get used in the design center because it's pretty easy and was kind of fun I, I certainly enjoyed it um, and if you don't then 
check out some of your built-in designs and the lettering. The machines have so much to offer and we don't always, um... Are you not worried that the bag designs will melt in the microwave? Um, no, no. Eileen Roche says it's not gonna, she wouldn't use, she said yesterday, uh, sorry, Thursday, that she would not use polyester batting. You should use the cotton batting, but I, I don't know. We have not I made a whole bunch of the bowl koozies, um, bigger ones with the AccuCold dye, and I didn't have any problem. If you had any problem, Lynn, I found some Mickey Mouse material and made her some. Um, the girls use theirs all the time, and nobody's had any issues. So cotton, the batting, for sure. Um, Eileen Roche feels pretty confident that the polyester thread, nothing will happen to it, so. I have not tested it out, and I probably won't test it out. I would never, though, use cotton thread in my embroidery machine. I think that would be a disaster. Now you can kind of see it on the camera. It's picking this up, picking it up. I have to tell on myself I've been on a Star Trek The Next Generation Marathon while crocheting another blanket. I guess my geek is showing. <laughs> Misha, you should come over because that's what we do. <laughs> Isn't that funny? That's, that's like a happy evening. I'm always doing something and uh, I've been crocheting and teaching Don how to crochet. Right, Don? Yep. He's doing pretty well. So, yeah. That is... Um, I need to do more. How many, how many times have we watched rewatched Star Trek? Oh, many times. We just watched all of the movies, the new movies. Oh, man, are they fantastic. The only ones I won't watch are the... 1968 ones with uh, William Shatner, although Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly, but William Shatner just kind of ruins everything. It's like, blah. I have used mercerized cotton for freestanding lace, and it makes tons of funds in the bobbin. You have to clean it out quite thoroughly. Yeah, I don't really want to fuzz up my machine, so... Uh, yeah. Our movie tonight is Harry Potter. Yes. Oh, I just learned how to do that, and I absolutely love it, Misha. I have a project lined up for it. Um, didn't take me too long to pick up on it, but absolutely love it. I've been crocheting since I've been like five because my grandmother was quite the um, yarn specialist, shall we say. She did a, a lot more knitting, but I didn't really like the knitting. I don't know why. Small hands or something, but yeah. Yeah, crocheting is kind of fun. It's not exactly the manliest thing you could do with your time, but... Relaxing. Remember when I first uh, started teaching you embroidery to help out with the business and I said I'm sure it wasn't your dream as a young man to I'm gonna be an embroidery person well, yeah and you thought that was kind of funny I learned from my grandmother and have some of her hooks they're 100 years old <laughs> I also have my grandmother's hooks. I don't know how old they are, but isn't that delightful to have that? I have a whole bunch of her knitting needles too, but like I said, I don't really, I don't really like to knit. But 
Tunisian crochet and regular crochet. Yep. I'm on it. A lot of men crochet and knit. Yeah, times have changed. Don said he wanted to know how to do it, and I sent him to Michael's on a sale and to buy a whole bunch of yarn because I didn't have any because I haven't done it for a long time. Let's be clear, it was more than one occasion. <laughs> Let's be clear, <laughs> now you have yarn to, to work with. Well, we have lots. We have lots. We have uh, bookshelves upstairs that are stacking all the... But I also made a Yoda hat for the girls and that amazing octopus hat. If you don't know what an octopus hat is, you gotta Google that because it's pretty darn cool. It took me forever to do. But it's cool. You'll have to show Sue the pic I sent you. Oh! Oh no! Kathy Facet knots are awesome. Kathy, oh, that's the designer. Yeah. We were gonna get the uh, crochet hooks that you charge, and they have a light on them, but I didn't like them, so. We're almost done with this, by the way. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's really nice. So when I do the video, probably next week, of the hot potato bag, I'm not going to be doing the stitching. Because it's just stitching. I didn't touch Eileen Roche's design at all. So it's just stitching. But I will show you the sewing. So you get two videos for one project. Cool. I almost missed it. Well, you didn't. I'm glad you didn't. Hubby is getting me a set of the in independent... Oh, light up hooks. Interchangeable. Yeah, I just didn't like them. I like the... I know it's kind of weird, but so am I. <laughs> I like the like aluminum plain cheapest ones because that's what I've always used and I'm just much more comfortable with them so yeah yeah I personally find the noise of my embroidery machines relaxing yeah you know my kids grew up listening to the embroidery machines and when Sam first started working on night shifts I tried not to run the 10 needle down here and she's like, no, please do mom. It is, it is comforting. I'm like, oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. They find it comforting too. It just, it's what they grew up with. So they enjoy it. Um, I sometimes get tired of the 10 needle, but that's because I had however many of them going at once all day, every day for how many years? It gets kind of loud. And I'm not noise sensitive, but sometimes loud anything just annoys me. And yes, Karina, I did bump the camera. <laughs> it's in my way. All right, this is the last color change, and then we're going to continue making our design. Uh, it's a beautiful design. I really love the lettering. I really do. And I'm going to show you guys, uh, tell you guys, um, the lettering isn't quite showing up as well as I wanted. And what you could do before you finish it, you could go back and do the lettering again with a darker color. And then it will show up better. You can just stitch right over it. You don't have to start again. And I may or may not do that. <coughs> There's some big jump stitches. Big, big jump stitches. They are just jumping everywhere. I guess I will use my new Tula Pink scissors. 
trim, to trim them out. I haven't done that for so long, I guess. It's not a big deal, is it? Yeah, it's such a cute design. And I love fonts, and especially embroidery fonts, and I think this one is adorable. Yeah. Holy jump stitches, Batman. That's what I say all the time. Holy jump stitches, Batman. But that's okay. I'm trying to decide. The green colors are fantastic. What I really like, variegated, and then all the colors in the variegated, I think that is a fun uh, game to play. Tula pink scissors, I'm so jealous. I know, I had to give Dawn my really good scissors and I spotted them. And I absolutely love my Tula pink applique scissors. So I thought, eh, it costs about the same, you know. Um, you know, so I did. And today will be the first day that I used them. Such a cute design. Such a cute, we're almost done. And I'm getting my back fabric ready. Now I just used regular batting on this. Um, you'd have to get the therm thermo, thermo web, thermo, hmm, if you're making a trivet to make sure it's insulated. So what I do here, the next step is putting the backing on. So it goes face down and because I actually trimmed it, you can see through to make sure it's all covered. And now we're going to stitch that down. I'm just going to leave the dark thread in. I think the dark thread looks great. So it's just going to stitch it down. Now, if you wanted to tape it down on occasion, I do. I don't find any problems with doing it this way. And I guess this is going to stitch out twice, which is fine. I only made one mistake. I added an extra outline to it. So that's just easy to skip. Don't forget to save it when you're done putting it together too. OML crochet group. Ooh la la. <laughs> because I need more work to do. Maybe we could put do some videos and put it under the OML Crafty Extras playlist. Maybe. Maybe. Or not. Oh, it's almost time. I want to see. I don't think I've added an underlay. Can we go back to the desk, Don? Okay. Yeah, you can't really see the lettering how I no. wanted. No, we can't. Why? <laughs> it was too far away. Ah, I know. It's okay. It's not the greatest example. I, I wish I had done better, but what well, are you going to do? Put it in the group. We'll be able to see it better. Yeah, yeah, more of detail. I think I will go over the lettering with the darker thread, though. So, flip your hoop over and very, very carefully trim, trim the back. Make sure you're not putting any pressure on the water soluble stabilizer especially at this point because we don't want it to move for sure i love these greens i love the greens i was thinking like um there's a couple of really cool designs with lots of leaves in it and it, in the past it's been hard to pick out what greens look good with it and now I know what looks good just go in the drawer and pick them out and they're all there so I just thought I'd pick a green for the background so remember if you're making a trivet then you need to use the right uh, thermal batting I don't have anything any of it so I didn't I'm just making a regular one so, hot potato. Hot potato. I love the design. The clovers are beautiful. Mm -hmm. All right, back to the machine, please. 
And now... Yeah, we can see the lettering much better on this camera. <laughs> uh, yeah, for sure. And now, for something completely different, I'm going to change my bobbin. I'm going to say, hey, you're pulling it out again. I know, I'm going to actually change my bobbin. Um, I have this green, but that's too light. So I'm going to use black because the dark green and the black should kind of meld together. So it's better to have a darker color. You don't always have to match it per perfectly. So I managed to do that. I think maybe I thought I was doing the outside in a different color. Okay, so no zigzag stitches. I forgot to add them, uh, but you can. Look at that, perfect satin stitches. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, Don. They're nice and wide and there is a spot to add the underlay. So you want a zigzag underlay. Well, I'm really impressed at how easy this was to do. I think that's awesome. Happy Bob and Patrol. <laughs> I know, right? That was a neon green bobbin. Yes, it's not like I wound it. That is from my cheater box and it was here. So I thought, yeah, I'll be good. Make the bobbin police happy, you know. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. When you made the design shape, could you scan and cut to cut it out first? Oh yeah, oh yeah, for sure you could have. I didn't think to do that, but uh, it's kind of like a video all in itself. We'd be here for like two hours doing everything, so. Beth showed up later. Well, it's on my machine. I suppose I could make one for... That's what I'll do. I'll, I'll make the outside. It'll be a, a smidgen different. Um, but I'll do it on the computer and post it up in the group. Uh, you have to go to des uh, Designs and Machine Embroidery website to get the hot potato. That is not my design. Yeah, can you write me a note? I'll do that right after. That's a good point and a very good question, and thank you for asking. Yeah, she said she's got the diamonds, but she just wanted to know the point, right? Yeah, I did it all on my machine, which is the coolest, but yeah. So if you have a machine with a design center or IQ designer, then give it a try. It's super easy and, you know, might as well use the technology that we're given. Um, and if you don't, I will make one for you guys on software. So, um, thank you so much. I'm not quite ready to make my own. Working on it. No, just keep working on it. That's fine. But yeah, I'll do that. That's a very good point. Uh, this is looking great. So, yes. I, I should show you guys that one time. Now I have the Scan and Cut DX, which means my Luminaire and the DX can communicate quite nicely to each other. You don't have to use any kind of software in between. And there's a button when you do a shape like that that you could just send it directly to the Scan and Cut, which is super. What are you looking at? What do you want? What are you looking at? I'm a little unbalanced with the colors. The dark green is perfect. So before I take this off the machine and I know it'll show through the back, I am going to go over the lettering maybe. It's so cute though. It's so cute. That was like super fun to do it on the machine. Yeah. 
But yes, it would be really cool to do a video of doing exactly that. I have a Solaris. I'll try this and join you guys. Awesome. Give it a go. I have not done enough of it, so I'm going to make an effort to work on it. So you guys can too. Is this a pot holder? No, it is, um, well... It's a trivet, but I didn't, I don't have any of the thermal batting to make it a trivet, so it is just uh, not heat resistance. So I guess it's a mug rug. I didn't really want to label it as a mug rug because it's not supposed to be. What are you laughing at? It's a non heat resistant trivet. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, a mug rug. <laughs> but yeah, that's better, Dawn. I'm really impressed with the satin stitches. That looks great. And I love having all those choices for uh, different stitches. And candle wicking, because you know we love candle wicking. So, okay, two minutes. I'm going to keep the dark color because it shows up really well. And these are the fancy stitches. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are gorgeous. Those are gorgeous. Uh, why are you talking to Tank? Tank just moved my whole desk because he's a tank, for sure. Is it, uh, it's a candy dish, Matt. Yes, thank you. Hey. Or uh, a hot potato candy dish, Matt. Oh, yeah, that would be cool. It can be anything that you want, for sure. For sure. I can't find the free design from Dime. Could someone point me in the right direction, please? In the description of this video, there is a link to it. It's in the chat. It's in the chat, yeah, but we chat a lot. Yeah, I always put the links right in the description, the top part, so you don't have to read the whole thing, because who wants to? But yeah. Oh, Isabel popped it up. Thank you, Isabel. Why are you smooching a tank? Oh, what a tank he is. Tank, stop it. No, I don't want to talk to you. Oh, he's a good tank. I'm just trying to get him to be patient. But you should know better than to talk to him. Okay, these are fancy... Oh, now look what you created. You woke all the dogs up. Take no blame. Take some blame. That's okay. Everyone knows we have dogs. And I love the fancy stitches. I love the fancy stitches. So, all they did for the fancy stitches is take the same shape and assign different stitches to it. And then I just made it a little bit smaller. Because otherwise it would have stitched out over yeah. the satin stitches. That's perfect. Yeah, it's just one quick little step. I noticed they had feathers too. I That's absolutely nice. love feathers. Lynn says, hey, save those smooches for me. Yes, Beetlejuice loves Lynn. So, I'm going to hold it up when it's done, done in front of the uh, face cam. Okay. So everyone can see it. So, other than my poor fabric choice... Ooh, happy music. Um, I really love this. I think this was the most fun I've had with this machine. So, see, it's kind of hard to see the, the lettering. So what I'm going to do is take this dark color and stitch over it. I know it'll show on the back, but I don't care. Beautiful satin stitches. Uh, this design is stunning. Beautiful. And the whole design, if you can look in and see the clovers, the clovers are awesome. they're beautiful. Isn't that something, though? 
is. So grab your, oh, you can see the lettering a little yeah. bit better. Grab your design from Dime and uh, play around with your embroidery machine. This did not take long at all to create and start getting, um, you know, familiar with it. Uh, I'm really excited. Let me show you the back. There we go. See how well that the black worked on it? Yeah. Yeah, because it's dark enough. You really can't see it. So you don't have to match everything perfectly. Black and dark green works fine. I mean, you can tell if you look up close, but who's looking up close? Not me. So fantastic design for those of you who don't have all the fancy schmancy bells and whistle whistles i will make a free design and upload it in the oml embroidery university facebook group and all you'll have to do is merge the hot potato design that's not my design that's from dime and uh then you can get stitching next week i will do a sewing verse a sewing video on the sewing part of the hot potato bag. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Beth, by the way. I did see that come up. Um, so step outside the embroidery box, people. Enjoy the thread. Enjoy the design. And you know what? Enjoy your machine, too, for sure. Thanks, everyone, for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Bye, everyone.